So, this week we were talking about uh, paradoxes. You know the words? <coughs> how you can calculate durations and distances and amounts of time from one uh, frame to the other. Uh, it does lead you into paradoxes, but we have seen in a couple of examples now that these paradoxes can be resolved if you just apply your rules of relativity consistently. Almost all of the paradoxes arise from um, calculating something in one frame, calculating something in some other frame, but the numbers are different. That is not so much an issue. That happens in relativity. The issue lies in the fact that uh, sometimes real physical results change. And the, the, no other book does it better than this one by always call, talking about exploding planets and, and squash bugs and everything. And this is something you cannot patch up with uh, relativity. That's a real paradox. You cannot have for, that for one frame uh, somebody lives and for the other frame somebody dies. So most of these paradoxes, as we see, you can resolve by just being very consistent in your relativity. Usually it means that you forgot the loss of simultaneity, maybe you forgot something else. We got a very interesting one a couple of days ago, if you remember, with the non-rigidity. Uh, uh, since, uh, Ryan told me that the book actually does mention it at some point. Okay, so... Uh, Oh, that's good. But that issue is completely solved, yes. Um, and today there's um, two more paradoxes I would like to discuss with you. One I already introduced on uh, Tuesday. It was with the Rhino Robespierre uh, exercise 7.3. Um, you remember the exercise? Good. Uh, I was wondering if somebody could solve it, please. Marker in hand, in front of everybody. I'm just curious what you got out. Yeah, great. I have my own solution here. Let's see if ours line up. Does he live or does he die, by the way? He lives. He lives, okay. In both frames, yes? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't work. Can I, yeah? uh, it's not mine, it's biology, so uh, please erase it as fast <laughs> as you can. <laughs> <laughs> That was a statement about me, not about biology. <laughs> Let's be diplomatic. Yeah. The strange situation that um, the Dutch Keuzegids, for people who are in the know, it's this, uh, this magazine is not the right word, it's an official report that is uh, brought out every year. And, it's an, uh, it, it, it checks whether the universities and their curricula are any good. And it's uh, official, um, and it's uh, uh, not affiliated with any university itself, so there should be no bias there. And we scored an 8.4. We were the best broad bachelor program in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So that's very good. Mm -hmm. Yet we don't have any markers in any of our bachelors. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably the, the, the missing 1.6 points. They don't assess the universities on that. Sorry? They don't assess the universities on that. If they did, then the 8.4 would have been lower. <laughs> they don't assess the universities? What do you mean? On, they don't assess the universities on number of markers. Oh, no, that is no, that, no. I'm, sh I'm sure that uh, we would end up somewhere in the, in, in the, in the, in the mid fours or something. Like that. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. But <laughs> um, okay, so <coughs> I just, I always write out what the gamma value is. That's um, okay. Um, and I converted the feet to meters approximately, and okay. this is seen uh, seen from the frame uh, standing with the two guillotines. Okay, well so that the the two events okay, good. are guillotine one drops the 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 one closer to the head of the rhino. Mm -hmm. um, so. Would you mind making a picture just for yeah, a visual? Sure. Uh, maybe you can use the uh, the right hand sideboard for this. Sure. And two is guillotine two drops. Yes, thank you. Now this of course is the correct approach to things. Yes, you start out by pointing out what are your two events, and as we have seen many times, choosing the events is can be tricky business. Um, the exercise, if you remember. Simon, I think he's going to make a picture of this, is that a rhino is stampeding towards a double guillotine. Uh, the rhino, I think, if I recall the numbers correctly, was 10 feet wide. You converted it to meters, I think. The guillotines were 8 feet apart. Uh, oh, from the guillotine frame, <coughs> it will be the rhino that's always contracted, and yeah. he would, in principle, survive exactly. the double guillotine drop. 
but from the uh, uh, from the from the from the Rhino frame, uh, the guillotines are closer closer together because of Lorentz contraction from okay. his frame, and therefore he would not fit, and you get would you get part of his his body chopped off. And again, I'm not a biologist, but I can imagine that this is not good for rhinos. Part of my drawing. <laughs> 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 um, what was the city again? <laughs> uh, three or three fifths of C. Okay, so and this is guillotine one. And this is guillotine two. Okay. That's more like it. Um, okay, so yeah, as seen from the frame, um, consistent with the guillotines. So, uh, or rest with the guillotines, the rhino is shrinked, um, and so this is his length. Of the, uh, of the rhino? Yeah. Okay, and this is seen from the guillotine frame. <coughs> no, actually this is, sorry, this is the, I think this is the distance between the two guillotines. Okay, from which frame? Is it 8 feet, the distance between the two yes. guillotines? Yes, yeah. so that so I, this is, yeah. 2.4 meters. Okay, but to be sure this is in the guillotine frame. Yes. Okay. Good. So, uh, just to get the <coughs> notation uh, clear for for me, the, uh, the the unprimed in your okay, or the or a G or something. Yes. Guillotine frame yeah. distance between the two drops is two point four meters. And they, as seen from the guillotine frame, they drop at the same time. Okay. Yes. Uh, but of course, as uh, seen from the rhino's frame, we have uh, to apply Lorentz transformations. Um, so, we can see that. Um, Delta T will be given by Lorentz transforms. Probably R over there. Delta T R. My bad. Yes. Up. Um, and of course, we know that the delta T G is zero. So it goes. Um, and yeah, now we have to choose whether it's a plus or, or it's a minus. And to do so, um, what I did is that I, I imagine if the rhino had to measure length in the guillotine frame. So the rhino frame was moving. And so if you were to measure a length in the guillotine frame, since it's moving towards it, you would see a shorter length. Um, yep. Wait. How do I do this? Um, well, you have tennis people who could help you. Make yeah, yeah, yeah. You would see a shorter length, so it would it would be the exactly the the, um, the rest length in in the guillotine frames minus a certain quantity. So I pick the minus. Um, wait. Uh, well, is it a plus or a minus? Um, well, it's not a question to you, maybe. It's also a question to the rest. You know that at some point, if you apply the Lorentz transforms, you have to decide on pluses or minuses, yes? And. Um, Thing is, I, I also found the same. I use the same logic, but I have different events. I have the inverse, like guillotine two drops first, and then guillotine. Well, number. then you immediately know okay. that it's going to yeah. be uh, your. The two of you yeah. are going to have an opposite sign because yeah, exactly. yeah, the yeah, amount yeah. of time between the two events uh, depends on which one fell first. Yes. Yeah? So mm -hmm. if you switch events in time, then one of you will find the mi minus, and the other one the plus. So. Mm -hmm. So, that's right now. I think what I did as well. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I had the events uh, the other way around, sorry. Okay. Um, and it was a minus, indeed, mm, for this reason, I believe. And by doing this calculation, mm -hmm. what I obtained was minus 0 0.75 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds, meaning that actually what happens is the guillotine 1 drops first, 
and then after 0 0.75 times 10 to the minus 8 second, guillotine 2 drops. I think people agree with this, because of course this is very important. If you get a minus sign wrong here, yeah. then your physics is going to be radically different. Um, are, are people agreeing because it, it looks right, or do you see the logic? I only don't, don't see why the y minus is fixed. That's my only problem, because I get the events and I get the calculations, but I don't see the minus plus thing. In general or in this exercise? In <laughs> <laughs> but maybe in this exercise it would help. Um, the way I saw it is that if you're in the rhino frame, when guillotine 2 drops, when you're going towards guillotine 1, since you're going towards it, the length that you're going to measure is going to be less than the rest length. So delta x is going to be. Yeah. Delta xg is going to be bigger than delta xr. That's all. That's the correct argument. But. So that that's the determines the sign. Um, oh, that's all there is to it. I think that's correct. But then I don't but know is, how it the is tricky, yeah. I don't know how the change in like events would change that <coughs> actually because when he started I was like okay I don't know. Um, well, if you pick your 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 origin, the 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 distance between two things, distance also comes with the minus sign. Do you agree? Yeah. So. Um, if you ch switch your events, and this one, which one of you, you the GMT2 dropped first? Yeah. Okay. So then the, the, the distance between the two events would be a plus number, yes? Mm -hmm. But if you were to switch around the dropping of, of the two things, then, it, then uh, your, the, 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 the sign in your Lorentz frames would still be the same because the frames haven't changed, but you have, to switch, you have switched events around. And then you would say, well, if the first one is going to drop first, then the second one is at a minus distance from where the first one dropped, and that is your minus sign. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but that is indeed, also when I do the other side, one of the things that I find the hardest. Yeah, that, that is, that is the thing. Yes. Okay. Well, in this case, your, your, your logic is very correct. Um, um, in, okay. In, in, in the exercise that I will do later, I will, I will just apply it myself. You will see it happen, okay? There's a subtlety there, and this is why it's a good exercise. Uh, 7, 10, I will show that later, but at this moment, this is all correct. Okay, it's fine. You just have to sit on somebody's... Uh, <laughs> somebody over. Um, okay. And um, so, this is the time that between the two events. Um, and since it travels at this speed, also in this frame, uh, what the rhino sees is that um, he moves uh, a distance, um, which is 3, 5, C, 9, Where did you get that number from? <coughs> Delta X? Uh, no, it's just um, what I mean by this is how far he moves ah, okay. uh, in this time. Okay, now but that's good to keep that straight, yes? Yeah. We have an exercise with um. multiple delta x, and I don't mean yeah, delta sorry. x, no, that's fine, that's fine. I mean, this is, uh, it's just good, good to, to take a moment to yeah. and, and yeah, yeah. appreciate these things. Uh, <coughs> relative team, you typically have multiple delta x's and delta t's, and usually you say, well, these two events, as, but then seen by the other person. Here's a new delta x altogether. It has nothing to do with the previous delta x. The previous delta x, either in the robosphere frame or the guillotine frame, says something about where the two events happened in, those, in their respective frames. This delta x has a completely new physical meaning uh, at all. Yes. Namely, it, it says how much inter intermittent time has robosphere moved forward. Yes. As right. seen by whom? By whom? Uh, as seen by uh, robosphere. Okay, then we have to be a little bit more careful. Okay. No, that's correct. Um, uh, now, is it, by the way? Uh, so is this is the time yes. between the two events in Robespierre frame. Yeah. So in this time between the two events, he can move this distance. Okay, mm. uh, that is correct. Uh, no, it's, it's fully correct, but I'm just going to be a little bit uh, uh, puristic here. <laughs> that is, um, if you would say, well, this is the amount of distance that Robespierre has moved, in his own frame, in your own frame you don't move, do you? You're always at exactly yeah, at your center. <laughs> so you would say how much the guillotine has moved yes. towards Robespierre. Of course we mean the same thing. You meant how, how much closer he got to guillotines. But the, the, the logic is, is correct. And so essentially what's happening is that Robespierre was here, 
uh, his head was here at this point. Um, wait. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so he sees guillotine one drop first, as we show here. Yes. And then, before the guillotine two drops, which is this amount of time, he can move this distance, which is um, approximately 0 0.45 meters. Mm -hmm. 45 meters. Um, <coughs> therefore, by moving this uh, 0 0.45 meters forward, um, he sins. Um, the two guillotines in his frame have a so okay now it's a little bit tricky uh, so this distance as seen by Robespierre is 1.95 meters I think um, yeah and so since for him himself he's uh, long eight he's eight feet long which was 2.4 meters. Um, then he can he can move this 0 0.45 meters, allowing him to be to have his tail just after the second guillotine when the guillotine drops. So you would survive, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Um, I think I have a question, but maybe somebody else does as well. To see whether um, the rhino survives in his own frame is like the explanation using the time and distance enough, or uh, the only, uh, what is enough is is for you to show that he, he doesn't get one of the guillotines chopped on his body, okay. uh, and I think that this is a strategy that was chosen here, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. um, because what Simon did here, he he calculated. Uh, uh, first of all, he calculated that in the, in the Rob Robespierre frame, this one drops first and then this one drops because it came out with a minus sign. So when Robespierre's head was here and this one has dropped, um, then it, it still takes a certain amount of time, time in Robespierre frame before this one drops. That amount of time was this number. Mm -hmm. And that's good because that allows Robespierre to move forward a little bit and maybe get his butt side inside the guillotine before it drops. So the question whether he survives is, Given this amount of time that he still has to run in his frame before the second guillotine drops, does he have enough time with that speed to get all of his backside in? And in order to do that, what you did, you calculated, well, he can run this amount of time, or this amount of distance, in his own frame, but is that more than he should run in order to get everything inside? That is exactly the, the amount of time for his back to be right after the guillotine, because it's 0 0.45 meters, and this length is okay. 1.75. <coughs> so if you sum the twos, you will get to 2.4, which is exactly the distance that he sees. Okay, uh, that also solves my question. I wasn't really clear what you meant by this number, but by this number you mean how far the two guillotines are apart? Yes. I've seen it over sphere. Right? Exactly. That's so, what oh, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, I'm sorry, there are so many good facts. <laughs> no, I know, I know, but yeah. be sure on your exam to write yeah, down yeah, so, yeah, so you don't have to guess what numbers mean, okay? You can solve so, that by doing Lawrence contraction. Yeah, this is Lawrence contraction of that one. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Um, okay, so, the, the, uh, Jan, I think that would answer the question because um, yeah. uh, he, he, in his own frame, he has to run. Uh, <coughs> wait, 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 wait. He can, he runs 0.45 meters, but the guillotines are 1.95 meters apart as seen by him. How do you conclude then that he survives? I'm not sure why that is. Because um, these two would add up to 2.4. Well, yes, but I mean, this is the... This is the distance between the two guillotines. As and seen he, by him. But him himself, he's long 2.4 in his, own, like his rest length. Is his rest length two point four meters? That's why. And this because okay. here you write that the guillotines are two point four yeah. meters apart. So which yeah, but it's the same. Frame, yeah. he's more. In his frame, his rest length is the same as the length between the guillotines and the guillotines frame. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I was missing that step. Yeah, okay, no, 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 that's that's, that's so my bad. No, no, no. I, um, I, good, good, good. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Because I, I because I was thinking well, uh, if his head is here. When the first when this guillotine drops, and then there's still um, uh, 195 minus 2.4 this amount of butt sticking out, exactly. and that is 0.45. Exactly. And then you say, oh, but that's exactly the amount that he, he that he still has time to, yeah. to run in between the two droppings as seen in this frame. Precisely. Yes. Okay. Wow. Uh, so that that means he's saved, but he's just barely saved. Okay. Barely saved. 
Uh, so this is all from the Robespierre frame. The Robespierre frame, he survives. If you go to the guillotine frame, and all numbers will be different. That is not the paradox. That's just relativity. The paradox would be if he would die in the other frame. Because then all of a sudden, apparently, it, it, it becomes reference frame dependent whether some, something dies or not. And that, and that should not be the case. Physics should have the same outcomes in all frames. Um, so you have proven it that he survives in his own frame. How about the guillotine frame? So in the guillotine frame, simply what happens is that um, what they see is that the Rob Robespierre's length is lower and contracted, mm -hmm. and so he's going to fit exactly uh, okay. between okay. the That's two okay. guillotines when the two drops exactly. simultaneously. From the guillotine frame, the things guillotine are, are relatively easy, you would say, yes, yes because yeah. you only have to do one transformation and, and no thinking. Okay, except for that transformation, if you say, well, from the guillotine frame, it's Robespierre that gets contracted, and he would exactly yeah. fit. So it's not just that he lives in both frames. It's by the margin by which he lives is also <coughs> exactly the same. He just barely survives in both. So that means no paradox, even though the numbers change from frame to frame. Sorry. <coughs> You're saying that his length is the same distance between the guillotines. Can you read me the problem, please? Because I really don't remember. Yeah, but that's the thing. It yeah. says, um, meanwhile, yeah. Ars compatriots conspired to place him on a cart and push him at the speed of 3 over 5c. Yes. Yes. Reasoning that in the grounds frames, yes. length, yes. Ars length will then be 2.4 meters. Yes. So it's in the guillotine frame that he's 2.4 meters, not in his home. Uh, yeah, but but it's weird. This is what he meant here. Okay, uh, but how long is he in his own frame? But, but that's why he's worried, because... R himself is worried, however, because he reasoned that he, from his point of view, he's 10 feet long, which is more than 2.4 meters. Yeah. Okay. Um, not bad. Uh, yeah, this. I don't know if he's going to say Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Then this mm. was. But is there, well, really was, it just, was it just wrong in the, in, the, in, in, in the way that the numbers were depicted in the picture? Or is the logic of the whole exercise wrong? Or the whole solution wrong? Th that's a bit what I'm doubting, because okay. the way he solved it, he used the length between the guillotines mm -hmm. from the rest frame and used the length of the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the rhino's own frame as the one depicted also in the, in the rest frame. Okay, well then let's, let's run through the numbers one more time, just to be sure. sure. Okay. A bit. So. Uh, okay. So let's see. Uh, I think the, all of this is, yeah. is, is 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 correct. Yes. In yeah. his frame, it takes this amount of time before the second guillotine drops. So that's the amount of time that he can still run ahead and get his butt side in. The amount of time that he can run in that amount of time, uh, the amount of distance that he can run in that amount of time <coughs> is indeed this number. It's 0.45 meters. So the oh. question now is, how much in his own frame is his butt sticking out still? Mm -hmm. When his head is here, how much of, it, it, of his butt is sticking out? But and the distance between the, the guillotines was 8 feet, as seen from the guillotines frame, right? Precisely. Okay. So that means from uh, Robespierre, Robespierre frame, uh, is, is, uh, that, that's this one. Mm -hmm. So in his frame, he, he finds that when his head is here, the other guillotine is 1.95 9 feet meters behind him. Okay. Yes? No. Yeah. And uh, in his own frame, his own length yeah. is three meters, I think. Mm. Well, uh, ten feet, which. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, let's stick to meters, meters for a moment. Meters. Okay, so that yeah, means that's, that's the problem also, because in a lot of the con converting, like the, the, the units, yeah. change a little bit, and I wanted to keep using the speed of light. I see. Uh, I had the same issue, but I I just kept everything in feet and. Uh, and, and, uh, no, I, I didn't use C at all. I just wrote everything as feet divided by C. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. okay, but then I think maybe the answer is not as salt as we thought that it was. No, because if he's 3 meters and he can only travel for this 0.45 meters when the first guillotine is dropped, mm -hmm. yeah. then he will probably not survive. For some reason, my, my numbers when I did them feet do match up. Though. Um, yeah. Because I, I use the same logic. I, I had yeah. two different events, but my logic is the same. So I'm, I'm yeah, doubting a little bit. I didn't. I, I don't recognize his numbers, but that might be, might be because we've been yeah. using yeah. different unit systems. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Could it be that there is just? I mean, that the logic is completely correct, but we just uh, messed up a little bit our, our unit conversion. I think. Yeah. I think the conversion. The logic seems. Good. The logic is fine. I think. Right. Yeah, yeah. And even that side of the board is completely correct. I think. Uh, even in numbers, in values. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah
So, the que so this is where I think that the second guillotine blade will drop. That's this amount of distance. This butt side is a little bit extra distance. And I think that that extra distance seen by him is 10 feet minus this amount. That's how much, how, how much his butt is sticking out. 32 over 5. Uh, some number comes out. So this is the amount of time that he has to run in order to survive. So it's 10 minus 32 over 5 feet. Let's see, that's uh, 10 minus 30 over 5. Um, okay. Would give you 10 minus 6 is 4. 18 over 5. It's 18 over 5. So in order to survive, he has to run 18 over 5 feet to get his butt side in, as seen by in his frame. But unfortunately, that's exactly the amount of time that he has in his own frame before the second guillotine drops. So I think, the, again, the logic is entirely yeah, correct. I think the problem is here. I th yeah, where is it? Because this is um, about 3 point something. Okay. And so this was supposed to be 1.05 meters. Oh. Sure. And then with 1.05, this would be 1.95, this would be 3. And so was it was it unit conversion or did you, uh, was it rounding off numbers? Yeah, uh, I worked up with them okay. more over here. So probably this was 1.05. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, th th this is now completely solved. Yes, he survives in both frames. No paradoxes. Numbers change. Out physical outcomes do not change. Now, great. Very happy. Question. Yes. Um, in the the other the other uh, way around, if you look at the the Robespierre being contracted, yes, uh, then the result there will also be difference in time between the events, right? Because of the so because, well, because if no, you but it will be zero, right? Yeah. Yeah, because if you look at uh, everything from the guillotine frame, then the exercise is given that in the guillotine frame the drops, the, the, the oh place yeah, simultaneously. Well, it depends on the events and I have Yes, events, yeah, you whatever. probably, yeah, th that's probably what happened. So this is all completely fine. Great, no paradoxes. Hey, um, do you remember what rule all events between different frames should obey? We've used it to derive the Lorentz uh, uh, transformations. And it was a postulate that by, that we replaced Einstein's original postulate with. Do you remember what that was? So I'm just adding a little bit on, on top of this exercise. I need some space to, to do it here. There was a rule. I said, well, if you replace Einstein's everything, the speed of light has to be the same for all observers <coughs> of the invariant. You can replace it with another postulate. Uh, two weeks ago, I showed you that if you take that one, you find all the relativity, and you can prove that uh, you can prove Einstein's postulate. So, yes. So what is it? The c squared that you put in front. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's c squared somewhere. That's right. Theta squared. Theta squared equals. C squared d t squared yes. minus d x squared. Okay. Well, let's only stick to the d x squared because it's a one dimensional problem in space. Um, this by itself is not a rule. This is just this is just you taking a number, squaring it, and subtracting another number that is squared. The rule is in the, that nature has chosen to keep this an invariant. There, there's where the physics is. Um, we have a couple of delta t's and delta x's now, so we just check whether the rule is obeyed. It should, right? We, we don't have to impose this. It should be obeyed because we use the Lorentz transforms and the Lorentz transform came from this rule. So it, it, just for a check whether everything, everything is consistent, let's just put our numbers in. So we're going to calculate what this number is in both frames, see if we get the same number out. It should. So just as a check of, of our rule, um, pom, 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 pom. let's do it from the guillotine frame first. Guillotine. C squared, d tau squared equals. You tell me, what are the numbers that I should put in? What is dt squared? Uh, zero. Uh, zero. Okay. Minus. Eight feet or eight. And that is, in, indeed, that is eight. So let's put everything in feet. So that's 64, minus 64. 
I have an interesting question for you. you if maybe you can think of an answer in the moment when I ask you. But let's do it from the Robespierre frame. C squared d tau squared is same expression, but now for the dt as d the Robespierre and by dx in, in c the Robespierre, what are those numbers? Uh, I hear you, but for some reason I'm not parsing. Yeah. Should be 36, because oh, c yes. squared dt squared, um, dt is minus 6 over c, because c cancels out. Okay, so it's this number, okay, great, great, great. Indeed, the c cancels out, yes. Uh, the, the amount of time between the two events in the scene by double square was this number. Uh, square this gives you the minus drops out, you get 36, the c drops out gives you 36c minus. But this, up to this point, the numbers are certainly not correct. Minus the x squared. What is the x squared? Uh, I see a couple it's of the x's on the board, but which one is it? A hundred. Because the, the dx, I think, is 10. Because if you times that, um, the gamma times 8 gives you 10. Uh, I think it's shorter, no? because yeah. it's the distance between the two guillotines. Yeah. Which is seen uh, from Robert Spears frame, it's Lawrence contracting. Yeah, so which is the 32 and mm -hmm. uh, But I mean, I just applied the formula. It's just when you apply the formula, you get gamma times delta x for delta x prime, or delta x r, I guess. Uh, it would be nicer if it was only. It's because you don't consider the same events yes. as well. Yes, there is something there. Uh, there are a couple of delta x's on the board, but we have to keep in mind which delta x. Uh, you mentioned delta x is 10, bec but because that was the length of Robespierre. Yes? But that is not the length yeah, between the two events. Oh, I saw, I, I saw, I'm sorry, I thought that was what you said. Um, yeah, you know, the two events are, is the distance between the two guillotines. Yes. As seen by Robespierre. Robespierre. And uh, what is that number? It's 8 times uh, divided by gamma. 32. That is strange. If you do, but then you do Lorentz contraction, right? And that's if the time, like there's the condition. And is that con condition fulfilled? I'm not sure. It's at the same time. Yeah, one of those. Oh, that is the case. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. That is a good point. Um, uh, it, uh, it is then. Mm -hmm. Yes. When we went through the calculation, we saw that, that uh, at the moment that Robespierre sees his second one drop, um, he, yeah, his true. face has moved towards here, yes? The mistake that we made by trying to squeeze in this number, as seen by Robespierre, that's the, 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 the distance between the two yeah. um, uh, blades dropping. Um, but, but we have now two different events. What he does, if, if you imagine the zero point of his own frame stuck to his head, at the moment that he's over here, he sees the first blade drop. Uh, then he sees the back, the other guillotine, that one is this, not this amount of uh, space away, mm -hmm. but he's measuring at the moment that his face is here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for him, by the time his face is here, when the second guillotine drops, there this is, is when he measures what distance there is. And that distance is, well, again, the zero point of his, if, of his frame was at his head, is going to be this distance is seen by him, that's that number, plus how much he ran, yeah. that's exactly 10. Yeah. Why is that exactly 10? Well, we already knew, because he barely survived, so we could have already guessed it. But it, do you see the subtlety here? We were almost about to put in this now, because, oh, that's how much the guillotine uh, blades are apart. But we don't, we're, we're talking about the events, not where the two guillotine blades are, we're talking when they drop, as seen by the guy. That's they, Those are two different events. That is 10. Then how did he turn? Because he probably... If he's, trying, if he's trying to measure it there, yeah. and we know that that distance is the one he ran in that short period of time. Uh, that, that's, exactly bec that's, bec that's exactly why he survives. Yeah. I'm with you, but then... Okay. 
guillotine mm -hmm. one has already dropped by the time he starts measuring. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guillotine one drops in front, uh, of his face. At, in front of his face, exactly where his zero point is, so yeah. at position zero. Guillotine two drops at uh, 10 meters behind running. him, so at minus 10. Yeah. Uh, so the total distance is 10 meters yeah. between that. He's running that feet. distance where yeah, the guillotine feet. one has already dropped. Yes. Yeah. yes. So it is okay. Yes. Okay, so that gives us both 60 minus 64, so that's correct. Now, this should not, not be a surprise. And um, yeah, there was a thing that some people asked me a couple of days ago. So, does he stop when he hits the first guillotine? How can somebody run through a guillotine even if the blade is up? Well, supposedly he jumps over, okay? <laughs> the issue is not about him stopping. But if he would stop, he would still survive at first because of the non rigidity, right? Oh, yeah, no, that, that is exactly true. That was the thing that we learned two days ago. That was such a beautiful thing that even if he would have stopped, yeah. You would say, oh, well, he stretches back to his original one. No, no, no. Yeah. His backside, the leg, it takes a while before it lags. It lags mm -hmm. behind. Yeah. So his front side is at that moment is already in the same reference frame as the guillotine, but his backside doesn't know it yet. Yeah. That's the non-rigidity thing. So great. Okay, good. So he probably he could probably survive too in his uh, even if he had stopped. Okay, so uh, we have minus sixty four on both sides. What I'm not saying is that we have proven this rule. We haven't. Sure, the same number comes out, but uh, this was our starting rule. From this, we got these. These. Does whatever these rules then themselves spew out this number uh, should of course obey this rule. So it's it's check. It's not a proof. Where does where is the proof? There's no proof. This is our postulate. Okay, that's there's that. Okay, everything solved. Question to you. Um, suppose that I interested in d tau. Then apparently, no matter whose frame you're going to calculate the tau in, it's going to be an imaginary number because you have to take a square root. So, and the tau is an amount of time, isn't it? So we have imaginary times now. Question to you: What, what what's going on here? I want to calculate the tau. I know that the tau with a c squared somewhere, uh, uh, d tau squared with c squared should be minus 64, so I do the calculation, d tau will be some imaginary number. So I have in my situation an amount of time that is imaginary. And nature does a lot of strange things, but it does not make time imaginary. Well, it's just because it's the time between the two events. Yes. And negative means that yeah. the two events are switched. Yeah, but I mean, I don't see the negatives because whatever whatever yeah, minuses are in there are going to be squared away. So, so d tau is the proper time, right? Yeah. So where it happens that where the events happen at the same location? Yes. And is that maybe not possible? If they that is exactly what it says. Okay. D tau is the amount of of the is the amount of time between two events. In our case, those are these two events because that's how we chose them. It's the amount of time between these two events as seen by somebody who sees them happen at the same time. Uh, excuse me, at the same location. Right? The tau was a proper time. That's exactly what it meant. The amount of time between two events, if you see the two events happen at the same location. Now, uh, the guillotine doesn't seem to happen at the same location. There's eight feet apart. The <coughs> sphere doesn't seem to happen at the same location. Um, but there's, there's, I mean, so uh, we, we understand that we will not find an actual D tau for either of these two guys, but it says more. Because you know, wh whatever observer I'm going to write down, whatever reference frame, it always has to be minus 64. That's the whole invariance thing. It's not just these two observers, all observers. Whatever they find for dx's and dt's, they will always find minus 64 for this particular combination. And that teaches something very important. Apparently, what, whatever frame you go to, you will find no frame in which you will see the two things drop at the same time. That is impossible. Okay. Location. Yeah, a location, yes, thank you. So is that the paradox? Uh, no, the paradox was already solved at this point. Okay. This is just playing around. Yeah. The, the paradox was in the question whether he died or he lived, and we find that he lives in both cases, and it came about because of the non simultaneity mm -hmm. So that paradox is solved. Uh, the, the paradox, if you will, was more mathematical here, that I find that an amount of time squared should give you a minus number, and that is that means that there's something is wrong there. <coughs> and the answer is, and we guess that correctly, is that um, d tau is by, de by definition in the amount of time between two events as seen by somebody who sees events at the same location. And we, what we now find is, well, apparently there's no observer uh, for which this number makes sense, as in becomes real and a measurable quantity. Mm -hmm. So apparently there's no observer 
for whom the two blades drop at the same location. That's what we find. Not just these two, the fact that it should be minus 6, 4 for all observers, that's the invariant thing, means apparently there is no, whatever you do, you, cannot, you can never go to reference frame in which the two blades drop at the same location. And I sort of can imagine why, right? I mean, the only way to make these two things happen at the same location is by having an infinite amount of Lorentz contraction. Mm -hmm. Now, you can have big Lorentz contraction, you cannot have an infinite amount of Lorentz contraction. When is the Lorentz contraction exactly uh, infinite, as in, it makes things Lorentz contract to zero, with what speed do you have to go in your reference frame to see that happen? Light, light speed. That's what your, and so apparently what we see here, well, if you go, if you want to see these things happen at the same location, you have to go with light speed. This thing says, well, but you can't see them happen at the same location, so there's another hint that light speed is maybe unattainable. Although we still haven't proven it yet, officially. But we see many hints that this is, this is going to be the case. Yes. Um, I still don't really see the why um, that value there is ten. Okay. Because so the Robespierre is traveling through the first guillotine. Yes. Then he sees a drop. Then he travels on with his head, <coughs> and then the second guillotine drops. Yes. But the distance between his head and the second guillotine is not the distance between the two guillotines, then, right? Yes. That, that that's the, that's the whole point. By by the time his head is here. Yeah. The time, the, the the amount of distance extra that he has ran. Yeah. Um, this is when he sees the second guillotine drop. So in his frame, he's going to take a second measurement where that event happened, and he has to measure it from his face because that's where the zero point was. Then he says, "Oh, that's ten feet away. It's it's the it's the amount of uh, space between the guillotines as seen by me. That's this number, plus how much I ran, and mm. that added up exactly to ten. Okay. Yeah, I was confused. We're looking at the difference between the events in position. I okay. understand. Yeah. Okay, all solved. And yet another strong hint that speed of light is probably unattainable because otherwise you will see things. You will, you will, you, otherwise you will have square roots of minus numbers. So something is wrong there. <laughs> I was going to ask, uh, I think yes. you kind of answered it, which is we, we, we're dealing with problems such that in, with time, you know, yes. time um, in at rest, we see two events happen at the same time, but when we go at a higher speed, we see one happening before the other, that's loss of some activity. Yes. I was asking, could there ever be a situation where we see things happening at different locations, and then when we go at a certain speed, we see them happening at the same location? That's, that's yes, the and the answer in this exercise is no. Yeah, well. Yes. And uh, there, there's official terminology for this. Uh, it's called space-like versus time-like. Uh, this, is, this is what we call a time-like situation. So a situation where it is impossible to find them happen uh, at the same location. You call that time-like. And this is terminology. All clear? Okay, great. Super exercise. Um, before break, let's. Uh, there were some exercises that were just conceptual. We don't need the board. We don't need to do any writing. But there were some exercises in chapter seven that were really just on. Uh, uh, understanding what happens. So one of them was 7-1. Uh, well, that's our good friend, the twin paradox. So you have identical twins, A and B, separated at birth, blah, 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 A staying home, B traveling to such and such. Upon arrival, um, well, there's some calculation here. Okay, uh, let's move immediately towards uh, exercise C. We can go through A and B too. But the idea was you have one twin stays at home, the other one travels to a distant star, comes back, and it's really just the age old question who of the two got younger? Or crappy terminology, got less old. And um, because, as you know, the paradox lies in, well, both of them could have used time dilation to talk about the other person. Both of them will say that the other person got younger, and C is just the the age of question now who the two is right and for what reason. In fact, it already tells you the answer. Why can B, the traveling twin, argue that A should be younger than B? Tiredness, shyness, nobody knows the answer. The traveling twin had to be accelerated to get into yes. this motion. That's all there is to it. The traveling twin 
applied special relativity <coughs> where she wasn't allowed because she she wasn't in an inertial okay. system. That's all there is. There was a check that we wrote down, usually put between brackets. So A is in an inertial reference? Well, it's not explicitly stated, um, but it's sort of implicit in the exercise. Okay. That, that uh, uh, A stays at home, let's assume that's an inertial system, but given that that's an inertial system, that the other one cannot have been an inertial system yeah. because of rel relative acceleration. And that means that, uh, as you know, you can only apply special relativity in an inertial system B wasn't, therefore, whatever B concluded using these rules is bound to be wrong. Uh, just a checkup question. Is it okay? I mean, A wasn't in an, it was in an inertial system, but he observed somebody in a non-inertial system. Is it allowed for him to use special relativity? Yes. That answer is yes. Okay, good. All right. Um, how are we on time? Okay, it's a good uh, time for a break and then move on to exercise 710. More coffee? Mm. We have a coffee dispenser in every lecture room. That will bring us from 8.4 to at least Definitely. 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ja, dat is een beetje 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 een And I love this exercise because it's yet not a paradox, but the resolution is quite different. You've seen the exercise, read the exercise, done the exercise, got to get some numbers out. If it's waiting for me to do it. Didn't see that. I'm going to cut that out of the video. Do you remember the exercise? Does he introduce the exercise is my question really, otherwise if you start talking you have no idea what I'm talking about. It's the one with the train. Alright. I feel that maybe I'm going to make this one interactive. Because if people are seeing this exercise for the first time now, then you just see me do it and it's like asking you to be good at yoga by looking, looking at somebody doing it. That will not help, we have to do this interactively, yes? So, the idea is as follows. No surprise. I cannot do any. I cannot do any splits. I watch so many yoga videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, yeah, you know, with yoga it makes sense, right? But sometimes you have to tell students, not you. You have to tell students. Well, you actually have to do stuff. You cannot just watch me do it. Okay. So the idea is you have a train, and there's a tunnel, and the exercise states that the tunnel is 400 meters wide in its rest frame and the train is 300 meters wide in its rest frame. So in all Newtonian physics you will conclude, well, that train will fit the tunnel. But you know from the, the Paul Barn, the letter par Barn paradox that it's not always as simple. I, in fact, if you followed the lecture of Tuesday and you have understood it, then you understand that the question itself is ill-posed. Does it fit or doesn't it fit? Um, but that's not the question here. What they did was, was the following. They said, you know what? Uh, let's do a photo detector on the two ends of the train. So the thing just detects whether there's a light. If there isn't any light, it will make light. It will send a laser beam towards the middle of the train. And here's another photo detector. And this one just detects the laser beams that comes from either this one or that one. So here's the idea. This one goes into the tunnel doesn't register light anymore and electronically the thing is set up such that if it doesn't register light it sends a laser beam towards the photo detector in the middle. Same with this one. At the moment that this one doesn't register any light because it ends up in the tunnel, it will also send a laser beam towards here. And that means uh, that you might have a situation where the photo detector in the middle gets a light, laser light from both sides. And the exercise in true Halliwell fashion say well If the two laser lights uh, reach the, the photo detector in the middle, the train will explode. <laughs> <laughs> so the question, yeah, they, they, they always try to make things very... Uh, uh, But they always save people. Not, not, not the bug though. The bug died, if you remember. 
Mm-hmm. But people up to this point have always survived, okay? So let's see if that happens again. There's all there's people in here. The question now is, um, will the train explode or will it not? Now that by itself is, is a question you can think about, uh, but they already give you what might be an answer. Namely, so you only when the two laser beams go at the same time to the middle, that's when it explodes. Um, uh, the, the, the phrasing is, is, is slightly different. What they mean is, the as l- when the two, the, the wind in the, in, the, in the middle gets laser light from from, from both. both from both sides, okay. it, it doesn't have to be that first hit. It could also be a continuous hit. Yeah. Okay. Now again, um, from the train frame, you could say, oh wait a minute. Uh, the thing is Lorentz contracted, and maybe if you go fast enough, the tunnel is so Lorentz contracted that uh, this part will already be out at the other side, well, the f- that this part still has to go in, so there's never a situation where the two photodetectors, this one and this one, will be sending out laser beams. Right? The, the, the train will be safe, is the reasoning. The train will be safe if at least one of these two is out in, in the light. And again, from the train frame, you can say, well, the tunnel is Lorentz contracted. If you go fast enough, it gets really Lorentz contracted. And maybe then um, this one will stick out. And maybe the other one will stick out. But certainly not both of them will be in the tunnel. No two laser beams, no explosion. Of course, from the tunnel frame, the opposite happens. You would look at the train. And the tunnel people say, well, it's a train that's Lorentz contracted. So certainly both sides will be inside and send out laser beams and make the train explode. So the tunnel people say the train will explode. The train people say, no, we won't. If we go fast enough, will the train explode? Uh, I'll be there in a second. But just to point you what, what, what the paradox is here, is not so much that they find different numbers for the lengths of the tunnels and trains or arrival times. That is just relativity, right? You get different numbers and such. It's that you have a physical conclusion, namely the dying of people, <laughs> the explosion of trains that either happens or does not happen. That's the paradox. Yes, sorry. Do we consider the travel time of the light or not? Uh, that is up to you. Okay. That's probably a wrong thing. So uh, let's just, uh, based on pure intuition, who feels that the train explodes? And the answer is not, well, it's, it's, it's uh, the, the, the writer of the book is such a nice author and he's pacifist and lost people and such. Mm. would never write an exercise like this. It's based on the physics. Nobody thinks the train will explode. Okay. There are there people that think the train will not explode? Okay. There are still some people who are undecided, apparently. The people who have an opinion. Uh, was that because you... The intuition told you so, or because you can see how these people might be saved? Okay, go ahead. I sort of, I'm... Sort of, I'm not sure if it works with the numbers, okay. but the way I guess it works from the uh, what frame, from the other frame where the tunnel is not contracted would be that it takes longer for the light from the uh, which mm. one is that? Just a well, well, let, let, let's, the yeah, let's give things some names, okay? Let's call this A, B, C, D, and E. Yeah, so because the train is moving in uh, to the right, mm-hmm. it will, well, B, w- the light from B will arrive at E, uh, and the light from A will arrive at E later, I'd say. In, in whose frame? Uh, in, oh wait. Yeah. D- this is a train frame, yeah. and uh, in my, when I did the exercise, I call this the primed frame. Oh wait, it's the other way around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the other way around. This is the tunnel that I, I call the unprimed frame. In both frames, the light of A will arrive at E earlier, right? Mm. Yeah. Just like that's causality. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also at the first, at the train. Yeah. Yes, because by definition, A goes like emits the light as A first. Yeah. Huh? It's like um, A reaches C always before it B reaches no. C. At least mm. always or yeah, uh, yeah. before or or at the same time. Not, not earlier, well, but at the same time if you go at the speed of light, speed but of light. below that, not at the same time. Mm-hmm. Didn't you mean like A hitting E? Yeah, or that was... The light hitting the detector. Well, my, I, I'm not yeah. sure if it's intuition or anything, but I feel like the light from 
E, I think E will take longer. In whose frame? Uh, uh, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, I think in the tunnel's frame. Yeah. Because in the train frame it would be the same. It would be the same. Yeah, in the train, the yeah, so in time, the yes, it is a travel time exercise. Uh, I, I've been always telling you that relativity has nothing to do with travel times. <laughs> well, except of course when the exercise makes it explicit. It literally says it, things will only happen at the moment that, that light has arrived. They made it a travel time exercise. But it's, it's a little bit of relativity because there are going to be Lorentz contractions that themselves have something to do with travel time. And then there's travel time. So they made a sort of a mix exercise here. Um, okay, but th there, there might be some, some resolution there mm -hmm. because at the moment that this part is in, um, that's not the moment when E knows mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that this part is in because that takes a certain amount of time mm -hmm. before the light gets there. And so you can already tell there's something with simultaneity there because from the train frame, A and B, if they send us flashes at the same time, they will also arrive to E at the same time, right? In the, in the, in the train frame, the distance to A and E is the same as the distance from B to E. Yeah. Um, but not in the ground frame. But certainly not in the ground frame. But you might also wonder, okay, but this is under the assumption that A and B send out light at the same moment in anyone's frame and they, they, they don't, do they? Right? I mean, the only mo the moment when A uh, sends out light towards <coughs> E is when it <coughs> crosses C, and this one only sends out light when it crosses C, and that certainly doesn't happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there is something with the amounts of time being different, but we don't have full simultaneity in either frame. But th 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 there, there is some travel time business here that might save the people on the train. And the answer is yes, they, they will be saved. Um, what shall we do? Should we try to solve this together? Do you want to work on this yourself for a while? Now you sort of know where to look. Mm -hmm. What do you think is would be wisest? Well, I think together is nice. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> suggestions. Yeah, also define the events. Okay. That's true. Okay. Good. What are the events? Appropriate for the question that we want to answer. Yeah, but that's usually the question, yes? Yeah. I would say A reaches C and B reaches C. Okay. Then we have not solved the question, but then we can calculate the travel times after that. That sounds pretty good, yes. Um, we can certainly do that, but then we have the amount of then we know when A hits C and when B uh, hits C, do you, you, you mentioned? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Could we have three events? Sure. But you cannot put three events into one delta T. What about when B is at C? What about it? One, one, one event is when B is at C, and yeah. then Where an observer C is the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then an observer on the train sees where A is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if A is within D, then you could imagine that. Mm -hmm. So then it's letter and bond idea. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. B reach C and then measure A. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes, we can certainly try to get this back to an exercise we have seen before. Yes, I mean, that's, that's certain, that would probably certainly work. Um, I must admit, I, I, th I think that's, that's certainly a good approach. No idea how, how, it, how it works out. Um, I had a different uh, suggestion, but uh, maybe somebody else has one too. Not pushing mine per se, just seeing if there's people have other ideas. I think it's somewhat the same idea, but we could also say one event is when A reaches C and the other event is when A reaches D, and then we see where B is and if B is contained within C. Mm -hmm. Then I think it's the same idea, just the other way. Right? Yeah, but mm -hmm. then, but in in both of these approaches, what I hear is that we're we're going to see whether all of the train is going to be within the tunnel or not. And so th that is that is li that is literally letter and barn paradox, yeah. and uh, th that's fine. I mean, yeah. it's it's a question we can ask, but it's not the question we want to answer. To. When the answer is not is is all of the train inside the the, the the tunnel at all times. Well, not necessarily. If it's a bit outside, you can still say, but the travel time yeah. accounts for the fact that still the mm -hmm. two laser beams hit E at the same time. Yes. Okay. I yeah. think you can reason it from there. 
I, I think so. I think it's certainly a first step, but it's not okay. going to be the full resolution. Just finding out how much of the train is sticking out at, 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 at any point will only tell you something where A and B are with respect to C and D. It will not tell you how much light has reached E from either side. Mm -hmm. Th that would be a follow-up step, I would think. Yes, I just have one question. Okay. Wouldn't it be different lengths with like the events that we considered already? So even if it's like A crosses C and B crosses C, or A and B crosses C and you measure A, then yeah. you measure, you consider the length of the train. But if you consider A, um, a crosses C and A becomes a D, then you consider the length of the tunnel, right? Uh, you have to look at different ones, especially if you do it at the same time. Yes, I mean, if A crosses C, mm. that's your first event, and the second event is, is A crosses D. And the distance between. Th that would tell you something about the dis. That would tell you something about how, how, how wide the tunnel is as seen by the train. Mm -hmm. So that would certainly be appropriate set of events if that was the question. I agree. Well, you can define multiple events, but which ones are appropriate for a question? We we have a suggestion. Yes, I mean, one of them would be how much of the train is inside. That we do by checking where A and C are and where B and D are, how much train is in the tunnel. But that will be then the first step because the second step then would be then how would the light, the laser beams then reach E or not? Well, we could do an event when the laser beam of A reaches E yeah. and the laser beam of B reaches E. Sure. Uh, but um, that, yes. It would solve like the, the second step of the question immediately, yes. but it might be difficult to solve the first step. I think so. You see uh, what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, well, the problem with here, there's four events you want to address, right? Yes. So you have the first sensor, mm. you want to see when it's in the tunnel. Okay. The other event is when the other sensor is in the tunnel, and then the other two events are... What, when, exactly, yeah. exactly. So that, that's, that, that's the whole thing in this exercise. You're not just looking for two sets, uh, for one set of events and looking uh, what the delta T's and delta X's are in two frames. You have two sets of events. One indeed has something to do with, with when is, is, a, is, is A and B inside the tunnel or not. That gives you two events uh, as seen by the two observers. But you have a second set of two events, namely, yeah. okay, and when does the light reach the, the E? But the, the nice texture. thing about the second set of events is that it's just in one reference frame, only of the train. You uh, consider the speed of light, but it's not like you have to things moving relative to each other. Oh, you would still have, no, 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 you can still look at the, the second set of events, both from the tunnel and from the train frame, right? But you only have to look at it from the train frame, no? Uh, no, because we have to check whether it explodes in the train frame and the tunnel frame, so we have to check for both, in both. Hmm. The paradox okay. lies in, in, in the train and the tunnel coming up with different physical outcomes, so uh, just checking one of the outcomes uh, is, yeah. is, 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 it doesn't answer the question. So what we're going to do, ultimately we're going to have to look at it from the train frame or from the tunnel frame and then hopefully find that they uh, give you the same physics, the same explosion or non-explosion. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. What was your, uh, what were your reference well, or your uh, event? Yeah, I, I, I did something, uh, before I defined my events, I did something else. But I, ultimately I think it boils down to the same thing. What I did was I said, okay, when is the last amount of light coming from A, hitting E, right? I mean, at the moment that A crosses C, it will start sending out the beam of light towards E. It's not just one flash, it's a, con it's a continuous beam. Now, when does this beam going from A to E, when does it stop? Well, at the moment that A has crossed D. From that moment, it will stop sending out the beam, or the laser light beam. And what I calculated was, uh, when the last amount of laser light beam, when did that arrive at E, mm -hmm. the last light coming from A. Mm -hmm. th th that's one thing, that will be my first event. And the second event I chose, well, B will only start sending out its laser beam towards E, starts at the moment that it hits C. And then I calculate, okay, when does the first laser light from B hit E? So I have two events. One is, when is the last laser light from A hitting, hitting E? When does the, the, the first laser light from B hit E? If those numbers are a certain amount of time apart, then they will not. There will never be a time when both of them hit E, and the train will not explode. Oh wait, A and B are releasing light when they're in the tunnel yes. and not just at C. No, uh, the continuously no. throughout the tunnel. Oh, okay. No, no. no the, yeah. When I read the exercise, I had the same. There's some ambiguity in the semantics yeah. Yeah. because I thought, well, do they mean that it sends out one flash of yes, light? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, per A and B, or is yeah. it a continuous beam? Yeah. And to be honest, I still don't know which of the two they meant, but this is how I decided to read it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
But do you see my logic here? Yeah, it sounds if like beautiful events, honestly. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that still comes with, it, it's really, again, uh, that, that's, that's really two sets of events. Because one mm. uh, event would be uh, when A arrives at D, and then from that moment on, there's a second set of events, namely when does the light from A hit E. Mm -hmm. So I will always, I'm, I'm still going to have two sets of events for either frame. And then I calculated that. And then I found that from the train frame, things are safe. Then I also found that from the tunnel frame, where things were a little bit more difficult, uh, visually a little bit more difficult, it was also safe. And then as a final check, I had all kinds of different numbers, and I checked with the Lorentz transforms, and they actually added up the two the same numbers, and they did. So that was the final check. So th that was my suggestion. So yeah, should we try that one out? See if it works. So uh, yeah, uh, in this case, before I just started identifying events, I, I thought, well, you know, what 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 would be a good way to solve this? Indeed, we have nothing with relativity. Simply, well, at the moment that A has stopped, the light from A has stopped reaching E. Has then B the light from B already started reaching E? If the answer is no, the train does not explode. And, and only then is when I started to identify events. Now, because I have all kinds of different events going on here, I decided to make things extremely visual for myself. Um, and here's my coordinate frame for the x1 and just you know I have to put an origin somewhere I decided the origin of the x prime frame is here at the front end and then I also have the x frame its origin is uh, is here at the beginning of the tunnel that's just an arbitrary choice there's no physics here but you have to make a choice somewhere and this is the choice that I made and I decided you know what let's start the whole exercise at the moment that these two origins, here's an origin for x prime, here's an origin for x, when they coincide. So when both of them, x prime and x, are zero, this by definition I call t zero for both. Okay? That's an assumption that I make, uh, but it's without any loss of generality, as, I, as it is called. Because I can just, um, I just make sure that at the moment that this one is here, I just reset both clocks to zero. You know, that's not an event, right? That's not an event, no. That's just the, uh, if you will, the, the choosing of my coordinate system. This is okay. t, This is what I mean by t0 in both frames and what I mean by x0 in both frames. Okay. Because I already usually don't do this step where we say, well, where exactly is the origin? The reason that I do that is because foreshadowing. I know that once I've calculated where some event happens, I have to add on top of that another event. So it's very good at that moment to have your, your origins of your coordinate frames uh, very clearly. <laughs> So I chose this as my setup, um, and then I did some calculations. The first thing that I did, let's see, um, let's go from the train, that's the simplest of the two. From the train frame. The question is, when does the last light coming from A hit E? That's the question. That's event number one that I'm ultimately going to look for. And as we already saw, that's really a series of two uh, uh, sets of events that we have to look at. Namely, we first have to calculate when, as seen from the train frame, A hits D. And once we know that, then we have to calculate the travel time from the light going from A to E. And then add these two numbers together, that gives me the amount of time since the beginning of the exercise until the, the last light from A has hit E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the fact that it's the last light I'm looking at is exactly why I'm going to calculate when A has hit D first, because this is when the last light is sent out. Okay. Now, you tell me, how do I calculate the amount of time that it takes as seen from the train for A to arrive at D, for the last light to be sent out by A? You consider the contraction of the right. tunnel, and then the train knows how fast it's going. Yes. It was specified in the exercise yeah. that it's uh, a four fifths of C. Four I think. Four okay. 
Now, uh, because I have multiple events now, I'm just going to be very explicit. I call this delta x train primed. It's the amount of distance for the train to go from A to D as seen by the train. That's what I mean. It's high school physics, but not quite, because uh, D is not 400 meters away as seen by the train. It's a Lorentz contraction amount away. So the amount of distance that it has to travel is 400, Lorentz contraction, uh, 5 over 3. Oh, oh, by the way, this of course is how much uh, distance it has to cover. Fine. Some number comes out, 405 uh, divided is 80 or so, like 3 and then 240. Yep. So that's 400, 240 meters. So according to the train, for its, for its front side A to hit D, has <coughs> 240 meters, it's Lorentz contraction. How long does it take it? So what I'm now looking asking is the amount of time that it takes for the train to go from A to D. Yes, and the velocity of course is 4 over 5, uh, 250, uh, 240 over 4 uh, is like 6 times 5 is 300. You forgot the C. Yeah, I forgot a C. I was just thinking something yeah. was off. 300 over C. 300 meters yeah, yeah. over C. Yeah. So, sure, you can put in the number 300 and divide it by 3.0 times the times. I mean, let's call this meter over C. Okay, so according to the train, it takes 300 uh, meters over C to have its front side A arrive at D. I vaguely recall a different number. Let's see if I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> No, oh, it's 300, yeah, no, okay. I was okay, so uh, we have now considered one set of events. Namely, the first event is when A hits C, the second event is when A hits D. This is what we got. We're now going to switch events. The second set of events that we're going to look at is now that A is at D. Uh, how much time does it take for the light to reach E? So, new set of events, still in the train frame. So, what I'm going to write down is now how much time it takes for the light to go from A to D, uh, excuse me, E, yes, in the train frame. What is that number? On the picture of C, everybody agrees? It is correct. This is where the light is, uh, is sent out, yes? Towards here. No contractions because we're all doing everything from this frame. Mm -hmm. And in this frame, the train or the light has to travel uh, 150 meters and uh, does so with the speed of light. 150. Uh, this is 300, and I know this because it's in the middle. <laughs> okay. Good, 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 good. So I've also calculated the amount of time between the two. Uh, that's still delta x, right? We need to yes. calculate delta t. Yeah, that's true. Uh, how about this? <laughs> that's correct, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So then we add everything together. So the, 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 the grand total of amount of time that it takes is seen from the train, starting the clock here, before the light has finally reached E, is this plus that, so the grand total, so it's a time, I'm really literally going to write total for the prime, for um, light from A ultimately to end up at E, is this plus that, gives you 450 meters over C, that's good enough. This is when the last light has hit uh, the detector, the last light coming from A has hit the detector. Now, of course, that doesn't answer the question in any frame. Last light from <coughs> A um, uh, arriving at 
at E. So uh, if, uh, on, on the watch of the train, if the number is bigger than this number, light will, will stop reaching E. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's calculate uh, how much time there is from for the light from B to hit E as seen see from the, t from the uh, train frame. Now we can go through the same calculation, but you see it's, it's really the same thing, yes? You first calculate how much time it takes for B to reach C as seen from the train. Uh, then you calculate uh, the amount of time that it takes for the light that then starts beaming out to hit E. You do the same series of steps, and I we just want to give you the answer so we can move on. So, if you go through that exercise, you get the grand total of the light coming from B to E as uh, 525. This is when the first light from B arrives at E. Again, two steps. First calculate when B uh, gets to C mm -hmm. as seen from the train, then how long it takes for the lights to then go to E. And this is the, uh, the total number. Same calculation, somewhat different numbers. This is what comes out. Conclusion, physics. We're still in the train frame, we're in the tunnel frame, but what have we, is, is the train safe in the train frame? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because uh, the last light has, has reached E, the last light coming from A has reached E at this amount of time, and only 125 M over C later is when the first light from B starts hitting E. So there's never a time when both laser beams hit E at the same time, the train will survive. That's it. <coughs> yes? Oh. How do you describe the distance that um, the train has to travel for B to hit C? Is it the length of the train? Or? Uh, yes. Yeah, because, because you start because you said you start when the origins. Yes. Are, yeah. So True. yeah, exactly. The or this is why I wanted to have the origins really fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the amount of time for B to hit C is, of course, if they if A and C start at the same place. Mm. Then from the train, it takes 300 meters for it to get there. So when T equals to zero, O and O prime is at the same location? Yes, that, that's, that's how we define it. And here you see why it pays off to be really clear. Usually you can sort of skip that step, mm -hmm. but when you have multiple sets of events in the same exercise, you know, it's good yeah. practice to really define your events, especially in the Lawrence transforms that we're going to apply in a moment. Um, Let's do this from the tunnel frame. So we conclude now in the train frame. The train does not explode. Uh, can you tell me how we are on time? Because it would hate to run out in the middle of this one. That's 20 minutes still then. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And while I was walking, that amount of time became less. Did you notice? Know <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, only a small amount. Okay, uh, suggestions from the tunnel frame. Same exercise, different numbers. <coughs> We're going to do the same thing. When the last light from A has hit E, but now seen from the tunnel, and when the first light from B hit E, as seen from the tunnel. Well, this time the train's time is dilated. I'm not sure if we have to consider this. There's no Lorentz contraction, though. Is no I believe. I know that there is Lorentz contraction. Yeah, but for the A hitting D, you don't need it, do you? As from the tunnel frame? No, because only the train gets contracted. Yes. No, I'm not sure actually. Because does it, the front not get contracted? No, it would be the same for A hitting D, I think. It's just for the light hitting, hitting E after. That would be different um. because the E is traveling towards A. But the tunnel also sees the train contracted. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but do you care for A hitting D? Because the contraction mm -hmm. as uh, of the train is seen by the tunnel just means that the B end is moving towards A. Agreed? I don't know. Okay, so the question is how does it contract? Does this yeah, end go in exactly. here or does it get... Well, we defined it as starting at the same position. Mm -hmm. So the contraction moves comes from this side. Okay. But then that, that makes the exercise very simple because the amount of space distance that the tunnel sees that the train has to travel before A hits D is just 400 meters. Yes, the train is contracted, but that's not the question. The front end will still hit the outer end of the tunnel after 400 meters. So uh, uh, it's going to be the train 
the A hitting D without a prime, because we're doing it now from the, 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 the taller frame, is 400 meters divided by how fast the tunnel sees the train go, which was uh, 4 over 5C, is 500 meter, uh, it's 500 Oh, yeah, geez, I'm being stupid here. It's messing up. It is correct, but I immediately, I immediately went to the amount of time that it takes. So it has to travel 400 meters, and the amount of time that that takes, train, from A to D, this is high school physics again, no prime, is how, how far it has to travel in how much time, 4 over 5C gives you 500 meter over C. It's interesting because uh, the, 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 the same events took 300 meters over C. Can, can you explain that, by the way? Because from the train, the train people would say, no, 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 it took us only 300 meters over C for our front end to end to get to D. And they say, no, 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 it took you 500. Uh, time is dilated for that? It's, it's time dilation. Yeah. And the gamma factor for 4 over 5 is 5 over 3. Uh, there's exactly yeah. five over three yeah. in between. Yeah. So we are on solid ground here. And I think, Seth, this is what you, you mentioned before that was with time dilation somewhere. Well, yeah. 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 Okay, so, uh, but now, uh, as seen from the, the, the tunnel, um, at this moment, at this moment that this happens, this is when the tunnel sees light from A moving towards E. For how much time does that take? Well, you have to consider that the train is moving towards the yes. Line. Yeah. Yes. In fact, it's very similar to the very first lecture when we derived yeah. uh, time dilation. We have to do the same trick. We so we have to do it here again. So, the amount of time. Uh, now you know. Let's, let's start with the amount of space first. The amount of time, space. <laughs> 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 For a. The light of A to go to E, you should write light somewhere, there you go, from A to E, that's core, yeah. right, sure. Uh, no primes, because it's in the, uh, uh, the, the, tu the tunnel frame. Well, at the very least, as seen from, the, uh, from the, the tunnel, he would claim, well, at the very least, it has to travel this distance. What is that, what is that number? This is 300 meters of wide. What is this number? It's the Lorentz contracted number. Yes, it's the Lorentz contracted version of 150. Yeah. It's 150 as seen by the, by, the, by the train itself, but from the tunnel frame is Lorentz contracted, so it's going to be 150 over 5 thirds, gives you 90 meters. Okay, but that's not all. I'm a little bit too quick here. This is going to be 90, sure. Okay, uh, this is how much time it takes for uh, A, light from A, to hit E. But yes, in the meantime, E has moved towards the light. So it has to travel less distance. How much less distance does it have to travel? You see the issue, yes? If the train were standing, well, not standing. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, it has to travel at least this, but at the same time, while the light is traveling, mm -hmm. the E is moving towards it, so it's going to take less that's, time. Is that the V delta C? Yes, that's V delta C. your high school physics again. Calculate mm -hmm. Because the train goes with <laughs> velocity V, and the amount of time that it has traveled, well, that's, that's well, some number that we don't know yet, but it's the amount of time that the light takes to go from A to E. We don't know that number yet, but we do know V, which was Four over five. C. And there's a C, I'm sure, somewhere. Yeah. C, there you go. Okay, so this is correct. Just your basic high school physics, but now we have to turn all of this <coughs> into an amount of time. This is the distance that the light has to travel as seen from the from the tunnel. How much time does that take? Mm. 
How do I get from the distance that's traveled by light to the amount of time that it takes by light? Just 150 by C. Yeah, just divided by C. But wait a minute. <laughs> As seen from the time, you can already hear by the sound of my voice that I'm going to ask you something stupid. But wait a minute, isn't it so that as seen from the tunnel, the light goes with a different velocity because it gets the, the, the light, its own speed plus that of the train? No, it does not. This is, if you will, Einstein's first postulate, or if you will, that rule that we prove later on. Mm -hmm. So that's just really just C. Mm -hmm. But that means that it's this number over C. Oh, and we already kept that this was going to be 90 m over c minus 4 fifth the c drops out delta c a light a2 a to e and i get my delta t light on both sides so i can just algebraically try it out what that is you get t a light a e apparently is uh, at times one plus four fifths. That number has to be ninety. That's what we find. You should do a little star on the one because they're different. A T light A to E, right? And you're using them both in the same equation. Oh, or not? Mm, I'm not sure. I understand what you mean. What? I don't think I no, 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 no. It might be a good question. It's just I didn't parse it correctly. I think. Because this A T light A to E, this one, yes. Yeah, this the last light. Yes. However, that one is just, just yeah, which is the same as the one above. That's, that's, that's also the last one. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same as just yeah. this expression divided by C. Yes. Both of them uh, refer to the last light, to the center. Okay. Okay. Now, some number comes out. Uh, this is what? This is uh, uh, 9 over 5 uh, divided by. 9 is a 50. This is what you get out. Grand total. The amount of time that it takes as seen from the tunnel for the last light coming from A to hit E is this number plus that number, 550. And then, of course, the next thing that we have to do is also do the same calculation, but now for when the last light from the first light from B coming from uh, sorry the first light from B hitting E. Same calculation. So let's not do it in, in detail. But can you see where the, where where A difference is going to be? You can go through this. Yes. <coughs> it's the the plus. Yeah, it's going to be a yeah. plus. Yes. Because as uh, B, the light from B is trying to get towards E from the tunnel frame, uh, it sees E move away, so it's going to take more time. If you go through the calculation, you get some different numbers, but this is going to be a plus. And I will give you this the grand total. You can easily work through this yourself. The total for uh, B going to uh, E. And I found that that number was 625. So that's uh, having gone through the calculations. Physical conclusion. Does the train live? Yes. Yes. Because when the last light of uh, A has already come and passed, mm -hmm. only then does the first light from uh, B hit E. So also in the train frame, in the tunnel frame, the thing is safe. Same, right? Yes, mm -hmm. even the difference is the same. Yeah. So there's literally no parallel. Yeah. So that's very nice. Uh, this is the long way. I could have used these two numbers and just Lawrence transformed it and should have gotten those. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So so to wrap up, should we just see to do that Lawrence transformation? Just really to check whether this this really translated that because remember ultimately we had all kinds of different events, but our grand total of two events is. Light uh, being sent out by E, or, uh, by A, arriving at E. The grand total was this. Those are two events, so Lorentz transform should apply. We should get that number by Lorentz transformations. So let's do that. We could have saved us this trouble. 
but it's good. It's a good check. Let's see if we're not losing our minds. By the way, the the paradox is solved. Yes. Yeah. This is just playing around. What we're now going to do as some final check. So this time, travel time saved us, and no losses of simultaneity or such. All right. Um, Lawrence transforms. A going to B, the, this number. I'm going to drop the total thing. Gamma, delta T, A going to E, plus or minus V over C squared, delta X, A over E. And we only need this one. That's the only ones we're going to calculate. So, we know some numbers. Delta T, A, of, uh, A to E. No, you know what? For calculation purposes, let's put the primes over here. We, we have these numbers, and then we can calculate that one. We have these numbers, we calculate that. Okay, so tell me, what are the numbers that we have to put in? What is this number? Uh, that will be this. Now there's a V, we also know that number, that's uh, 5 over 4 uh, C, it's going to cancel one of the other C's, plus minus A is still around. Um, what is delta X AE? Right. You have the distance between the two events as seen from the train. It's not as hard as it looks. The, the distance of the light has to travel from it. Yes. Uh, that is 150. Yes. Yeah. And you think, well, wait a minute, uh, the train has moved all kinds of directions, blah, 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 that's all true. And uh, the gamma, of course, is 5 over 3 in our exercise. Uh, you have to understand, remember that we put our zero point here. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Well, um, there might be a slight issue. Uh, we put the zero point here. The two events were light coming from A hitting E. Now, the, between the two events, as seen in this coordinate frame, is a distance. It's minus a distance. This is where it happened. And in this coordinate frame, it's with a minus sign. It's 150 meters behind him that it happened. So there's a minus sign there. Okay, that turns this from plus minus into minus plus. But we still have to solve that issue anyway, right? So. No, it's fine, it's fine. If you don't see you anymore, have a good weekend. Our good friend, the plus minus issue, which of the two is it? And the answer is not, I'm going to choose the number that gives me 550. It will be the minus. Yeah, delta x because delta x is smaller than delta x prime. Exactly. Because if someone from the tunnel sees the train moving, we mm -hmm. see. Exactly. We will see a shorter that's distance. That's exactly. So that will mean that this one was a minus. Mm -hmm. But it just so happens that in our exercise, uh, uh, no, excuse me. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, one more time. I said that delta x is smaller than delta x prime because yeah. of the reason. Yes, so at this point, before I put in the 150, what, what was a plus or a minus there? Minus. That would be a minus. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see what I had. But then we have to put in the, the minus 150. So ultimately, you can get a plus. Oh. I had the other yeah. way around. Yeah. And again, yeah, not because I'm working to my way towards here. So we're not applying, there's something off in our logic, I think. Let me draw a picture. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is before I even start to plug in this Wait, number. This just entire thing is the train's reference frame, right? Uh, th this, this is, yes. Okay. 
Yeah, maybe there's a like the tunnel being yeah. contracted might. I don't know. And I'm going to draw a picture. I think that, that maybe that's a good idea. Right? I'm, I'm a bit confused about the 450 and the 150 because okay. the 450 uh, meter over C, uh, is the time it takes for <coughs> the, the last light from A to reach E, so the time it takes for the strain to get from A to uh, get A to D, and then it lights to travel. Yes. But the distance is only the distance from light traveling. So it's basically it's just for most of that time it's waiting, nothing happens, and then the last part that light the light travel is that not a problem? Or? Uh, I don't I don't see why. Uh, I mean what I, what I did was I, I turned the whole exercise into two separate sets of events, mm -hmm. and then I added everything together to make one grand total. This one grand total is itself a set of two events. Yes. Mm -hmm. Namely, a certain amount of time between the two, between uh, uh, when the last light hit the thing. But yeah, I would say it makes a lot of sense. No, I, I yeah. it's positive because um, for the train's reference frame, the tunnel is moving, not the train, and then the tunnel is moving in the same direction as mm -hmm. the light from A to E. If that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to draw a picture and, yeah. and, and uh, I think that will clarify a lot. Yeah. Um, but to that question, um, I understand the question. I mean, it looks as if um, it only has to travel here, but it only starts traveling mm -hmm. uh, after a certain amount of time. Yes, when this has hit this. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be something. Oh, no, I agree with that. But at the same time, I have my two events. Wh which are the events yeah. exactly? Yeah. The events is, is, is when A crosses C. Mm -hmm. okay. And the second event for the grand total is when the light from A hits E. Mm -hmm. Now those are just simply two events. And I can point where the, what the distance is between the two events. For the train that's mon minus 150 mm -hmm. meters because the first event happened at A and the second event happened at E. So that's mm -hmm. 1 minus 50 yeah. in between. And the amount of time we calculated here. Okay. So I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Now it was a plus minus issue. So what I did here, I drew my train. And with the two systems, x and x prime, then you have to imagine that, of course, this uh, frame moves along with the other one. And then I'm going to draw the same picture a certain moment in time later. Now, then you would have that maybe the train is here. Again, with its x prime frame now here-ish. You see what I mean by this picture? One moment in time, some later moment in time. Um, uh, looking at my notes here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great, 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 great. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was slightly different than the rule that we did a couple of days ago, but now I remember. Um, this is first event, yes? When both of them were at the same origin. Second event. Second event is when this happened. The light has hit this point. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. um, so if you were to ask the X frame, how much distance there was between where the first event happened, that was here, and where the second event happened, plus or minus number? Positive, yeah. It's positive, yes? Yeah. Sure. Is it plus or minus? And, and now from the train frame. The first event for him happened here, yeah. and the second happened here, plus or minus. <coughs> That's minus. So ultimately, this will become minus. That's how I did it. And the, the difficulty here was because we had so many events in different ways that I said, you know, I'm just going to take a picture, forget all the intermediate events, just the final events. Looked at the picture, saw that this number must have been minus, whereas this must have been plus. And you only get that with the overall minus sign in your thing. I think it makes sense as well why the, this, the delta x would be bigger because that's a bit after the train leaves the yes. tunnel, whereas that. it's only the distance to e for the train. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense, yeah. That's, that, that was a trick that we had a couple of days ago where we looked how which of the two was bigger. I used a slightly different trick. Now I use which one is, should be plus, which one should be minus. And I that got to the same result. Okay, very quickly, put the numbers in. Um, By the way, our tr the numbers are a bit wrong because our train is moving quicker than light. No, light it's not. Four, it's four. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Look how I, uh, uh, I just out of, Pure knowing physics, the, the first thing that I say is Pavlov reactions. No, nope, no, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I wrote it, it, it didn't, but I wrote it down correctly. Okay. 
450, uh, 450C, this is 120. So it gives you 330 in total, uh, M over C. This is this together. Um, divide by 3, multiply by 5, gives you 550 meters over C. That's that number. Now do the same thing, and you'll find uh, this number as well by Lorentz transform. So we've solved the exercise in two ways now. We've done it by explicit construction of the amount of time. And we could have saved us this trouble. We could have taken this number, took the Lorentz, put it back in. So we're all good. Everything works out. No paradoxes. I think we're about at closing time now, yes? So um, we have, as you know, the midterm next week. Uh, this is exactly going to be this sort of exercise. Not all of them of this, not all of them are paradoxes. Sometimes just calculate this, calculate the bonus transform. But there's a question just on your conceptual understanding. Can you explain why such and such and such? <coughs> My question to you is, is there something that I, only I can provide you with that you will need for your exam? Say from the answers. <laughs> well, is there something I can help you with before you get your exam? But something that only I can help you with. Yes? We can look up on the internet and find the book. Will you be available over the weekend if you want to email you? Yes, I will. You I will be working this weekend. Uh, I do have to say, sometimes writing a response to a business problem is slightly more difficult than showing on the yeah. What we can do, but I'm just offering this, is that maybe on Monday if we can find the time to have some sort of. Uh, Speaking mode, yeah, of course. So maybe some, sp some speaking mode for people who really want to ask some final questions. Do we have a lecture yep. before the No, it's on Tuesday. Well, speaking moment seems like a good idea. Okay, yeah. But then I will leave it up to you to organize this, yes? Not sure. Can we, in exam, we have a Oh, yeah, yeah. that works. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just offering. Um, if, if you do find in some way that you can set this up, I'll be very happy to come in. Evening is fine for me as well. That's, I, again, I'm giving this in your hands, yes? So if you find that you need some uh, explanations from me, please, you set this up. Yes, I will be available over the weekend for you. Uh, I'll try to be didactical in my writing when I only have characters to do this. I understood your explanation. It was just the outward thing. Oh, the quarterly thing, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I did my best. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you guys. Yep, uh, do email me if you need me.